Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. It's a good Thursday out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. We've got all kinds of stuff to talk about. We will hit the high school football at the end of the show. Games of the week. There's a big one in Class 4A. Biggest game of the, in the state is actually in Class 4A, according to the Oklahoman. And, oh, by the way, that could possibly affect uh, playoff matchups for um, Big Elks or one of the I-40 schools. It's possible that that game, the result of that game, could affect uh, who plays who. So there's that. Some other games that uh, could affect that moving forward in, in Class 4A. Class A Division 1, or District 1, Division 1, District 1. Yeah, it's hard to say it. Class A Division 1, District 1. The one out here. Uh, it's, gonna, it's just going to all be decided. We'll talk about why. And then have you seen? There, there is an unbelievable district out there in the state of Oklahoma. Of all classes? Of all classes. There's one that is just crazy huh. with, with the way everything's happened. I'll tell you which one that is. Okay. Uh, World Series starts tomorrow. Let's talk about it a little bit, huh? How big a deal is it to get L.A. and, and New York? To well, quote a uh, <clears throat> very prominent figure right now, it's huge. Huge. It's huge. Did we think you see that in the ratings? And if you do, this will be the highest rated World Series since, as far as TV goes. Uh, what are some of your favorite World Series moments? What are some of the most memorable World Series moments. And I just went back to our lifetime, like literally 1980 when I was born. Um, you know, he can go way back in time, obviously. But uh, there's it's been an incredible – there's been some incredible stuff happen in World Series on the field, off the field, in our, t- in our lifetimes. It's – I mean, I realize it's longer than we would hope. You know, when you say that, you're thinking like, oh, yeah, it's been like 15 or 20 years. Well, it's been 40-ish. 40 more, but you know, there really has been some crazy stuff uh, in there. So we'll talk World Series. The night off the top, NBA Thunder season starts tonight in Denver. Uh, I saw J-Dub, Jalen Williams, will be on the floor. So it's not two of the, the, the Thunder core seven or eight guys or nine or whatever. He, he'll be out there. Hard not, not, not pulling an Embiid, I see. He's not. And, oh, by the way, there are investigations happening. For Philly over the Joel Embiid thing. What is your level of thundered upness going into the season? On a scale of one is meh, 100 is parade. <laughs> like championship parade? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah like we're at the parade. Get, get, get ready. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about get ready. I'm talking about 100 is, oh my gosh, we're on Reno at the parade. Yeah, paint your face, paint yes. your chest. Yeah. <laughs> like be one of the drummers and stuff. <laughs> So 1 to 100, what is your level? Uh, what are you most looking forward to during the regular season? And then there is, there is some, there's an underrated part of this regular season, at least right now. There's an underrated story going on, and it's going to involve the Oklahoma City Thunder. But as the season goes along, I think this can gain some steam to be one of the most interesting parts of the regular season in the NBA. We'll talk about that as well. So 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. Oh, there's Will Bowie. Shout out, Will Bowie. He got a shout out yesterday as well. If I was him, I'd tune into the pregame tomorrow night. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, 225-9698. Uh, let's see, we got the, the app. If you're going to be outside the listening area, listen on the app. You can check out the Penny News on the app. Go pick up a free copy of the Penny News. It's out everywhere. Uh, Big Elk and Paragon TV tomorrow night. You can watch through the app. Big Elk's hosting Weatherford on senior night here at Big Elk Stadium. 
Also, Hooker coming down to Merritt. That's Class A's number one. Uh, Hooker Bulldogs. We talked about how hard that district was going to be before it started. Now you look up and it's number one and number two that you've yeah. got. I mean, you, you, only have, you only have seven district games total, and two of those are against the top two teams in the state. Uh, Obviously yeah. tough. Uh, but uh, you can watch the, there with Merritt and Hooker. And, of course, Skinny on Sports Podcast available anywhere podcast drop. How are you today, Jared? I'm good. How are you? What is your Thunder Up level? I'm being kind of – I know it's between 1 and 100, and this still seems high to me. I'm trying not to go through the roof 100 like you just said. But I'm very excited. I think that's fair. I'm very excited because of what we saw last year and the potential what we have this year and and all that. So I'm at about a – you know. Like an 85. I'm like right about a B, right? Right okay. now, right? I'm trying not to go over the top and then burn the house down if they lose by a point tonight. Well, you know? yeah. yeah. So I'm just, I'm like, but it's a long season. A lot can happen, but the potential's there. You know, the preseason prognosticators have, have already kind of dubbed them the Western Conference champs, but I'm not going that far because when I do that, I'm, I'm. Set yourself up for yeah, disappointment. Yes. Yeah, so. But I, I have high hope for these guys. So I'm right around an 85, which I think is uh, I think is it, it's it's fair. Here Here is the question that I have, and, and Will put this in his Fired Up for Thunder basketball text. And this goes for both OU and OSU fans. Are you more fired up about the Thunder because your football team isn't worth watching? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That has to kind of feed into it just a little bit. I made a it? comment the other night when um, um, the Bucks and, and the Ravens were playing because we were sitting down to dinner, and we always have to agree on, if we turn on the TV, what we, we have to agree what to watch. And it usually turns into uh, America's Funniest Home Videos or Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. And I said, oh, no, I want to watch the Bucks. I want to watch Baker. And like, what? What? Why? I said, because he's the only thing in football in my life that's good right now. <laughs> and then that happened. And he starts out and yeah. really well. Yeah. And you're like, see, I told you guys. Yeah. And then two picks yeah. later, you're like, oh, really? Back nah. But uh, that, uh, yeah, that certainly helps when, when your teams aren't good and you're looking for something else to distract you from a horrible football season. Um, it, it helps that the Thunder are not tanking anymore and they're they're actually trying to win. So yeah. that, that – uh, Absolutely helps. I was probably putting on the Thunder gear when it was twenty-one to nothing on Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you, you were thundering up and firing Venables all at the same time right there on, yes. on the tech on our text line. Yes, yeah. My white shirt was not an OU shirt; it was a white Thunder shirt. Maybe my Chet jersey I was wearing. I was, uh, I was, I was moving on at that point. Yeah, I, I think that's Thunder coming in clutch, like perfect timing, right for for this yeah. team to to be on uh, on that that track where it looks like they certainly are one of the favorites in the west if not the favorite in the west which a lot of people believe that that's the truth that the that they are it, the it is, favorite in the west it's crazy it's it's surreal really is is to think that is what the perception is now of the thunder and it does feel like you said yesterday it, it, a lot quicker than what we thought it would take after the for, the breakdown of of that fateful day in July when KD said goodbye and then everything that happened after that I thought it was going to take a lot longer so it is surreal and I'm trying to tamper my my excitement level because again long season injuries happen crazy things happen you know the the additions of the new guys on paper looks great will it work so but I'm I'm hopeful and I, and I'm very optimistic. Very optimistic. Yeah, I'm like a. Yeah, I'm, what number are you? I'm not that high. Just and, there's and, a lot of numbers between one and a hundred. There so that's is. Why I was, but I don't. I, I was I, like, keep it out of the nineties when I saw this question. Like, keep it out of the nineties. <laughs> don't I'm, go that far. I'm like seventy. I'm in because here. I don't care about the. I don't. I know they're going to be so good. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And like, they're going to be really, really, really good. And so the regular season, and, and I'm and I'm almost already past the point of caring what seed they get. As long as they're in the top four, yeah, they host the first round. I, I would prefer it be one or two, just because of the advantages down the line in the playoffs. But you have to win road games in the playoffs to get 
to the ultimate goal. No one wins every home game. So eventually you're going to have to win on the road. Does it? And we saw last year, you know, yes, it was a young team that had never played in the playoffs, and it's, it's maybe not this well-constructed last year's team versus this, but you, you kind of had to go through that to figure out what you needed. Now it looks like, at least like I said, like you said, on paper, Oklahoma City plugged the holes that they needed to plug. <clears throat> and the cool thing about it is, you know, like the, the first time, it, you, you had kind of redundancy with with Katie and Russ and even Harden at first, you know, before that trade. But it, it, it doesn't it feel like this team is more well-constructed that makes more sense than that one in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, 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 just, it, it you know, it, and maybe it's... It, what I like about that is that Presti has, is showing us that first run at a, at a championship with the trio, and there was some depth issues, I think, on on that team. Um, it's like he's he's learned from that. It's not like, okay, we're going to – okay, that worked. This is how we got there last time. We're going to redo that again. Well, to a sense, yes, he's kind of done that, but he's built on that, and that is that is refreshing. Yeah, it, it's just it, – it just feels – and plus, the game is totally different than it was then. I mean, it's constantly evolving. It is, and he's evolving too. It's he's a perfect owner. He kind of built a or a jet manager. He kind of he kind of built a team that that you had to have in the West to get by San Antonio or to get by the Lakers at the time with with Perk. The problem is they were too rigid playing the you know that that's not how you beat Miami once you got to the finals that one year. You you, you couldn't do it that you know, and it feels like those. Those lessons have definitely been learned, and and I think a big part of it, honestly, is watching what Golden State has done. It, not necessarily emulating it, but doing that type of thing in your own way, with with all the versatility now. You know, back then it felt like you know you plugged a hole in the lineup with every guy. Now it seems like all the guys can do about anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and that's, I think that's the lesson. That the league learned with Golden State, and and to uh, to a large extent, Miami started that as well with that kind of positionless basketball mindset. Uh, there, there's a few things thunderwise wise that that make me a seven. I mean, I, I just think that Oklahoma City is going to be really good, and and I'm not going to go crazy if they lose a couple of games. And and here's another thing: I'm not going to go crazy when guys rest because, it, I, yeah, they're young, so. It's still a long season, and the ultimate goal is to be as healthy as possible for the playoffs. So that's not going to bother me one iota with with the quote unquote load management. You know, like Chet. I think we watched Chet a year ago try to prove to maybe himself and for sure everybody else after missing that first season with the foot thing. Hey, I'm healthy. I'm I can play, and he played all eighty two. There's no way in hell he needs to do that ever again. <laughs> Miss 10. Take 10 games off. At a, I mean, it's not going to bother me is if, um, well, that you know, one, these, that won the text line. That won. <laughs> That's a winner. If, That's going into the Hall of Fame. If, uh, seven, you know, they, they all play like 70 games. Take off two a month. That, that doesn't bother me whatsoever because, like I said, I don't care what seed they are. As long as they're in the top four, I don't care. It's not going to be a thing for me because I just – you have to win on the road in the playoffs, and that's what uh, hopefully the, the, that was learned last year. I'll tell you what I'm the most fired up about in the regular season. To see some combinations, obviously. get Once Hartenstein gets out there, who starts, what's the lineup, who plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually fairly fired up for Jang. Usman Jang. Okay. You realize he was still the youngest guy on their summer league team, right? No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, he was still the youngest guy. Crazy. Now, at some point, he's going to have to do some things, right? I mean, he's going to have to actually look like an NBA player. But everyone writing him off already, he still was the youngest guy they had. <laughs> and so yeah. he was the G League MVP of the finals and all that. I, I want to see if... Maybe this he finally maybe figured something out to be 
what he's done some nice things in the pre, in the preseason. He really did. You know, maybe it's not what people want him to do. I, I'm I want to see him and, and how much of a role he might be able to have on this team. Um, obviously, the new guys and, and where they fit, and then what the rotation is. You know, do, does some of the shooting come back down to earth from last year, or is they, are these guys just really good shooters? Uh, I need to see Shea play make a little more. We know we know he can get thirty anytime he wants. I want to, you know, I think that's that may be a little bit of the secret to to winning in the playoffs. More mm-hmm. is him playmaking for guys, trusting, excuse me, trusting guys to to be able to score points. Uh, and then, quite frankly, though, the thing that I'm most excited about in the regular season is to watch the other teams that matter for Oklahoma City. And when I said the most underrated story in the league that can gain some steam, it's this. Do you know what the Thunder's picks are for this upcoming draft? Well, I know they have the Clippers. It's unprotected. They have that. It's an unprotected swap. Correct. So so it it, it looks like they have six first round picks when you just look at it. Yeah, I already looked at a mock and I saw like three. They really have. They really have four. In. So they have their own pick, the Clippers' unprotected swap, or a Houston top 10 protected swap. They only get one of those, whichever's the best, mm-hmm. which their, you'd think their pick would be out of the running for this because Oklahoma City is going to be too good to that, – that, that goes away. But like the Clippers' unprotected pick, what if Kawhi doesn't play and James Harden's ready to leave once he sees that the team sucks? Right. I mean, is is there a chance? I mean, that that could easily be a lottery pick, if not a high, high lottery. I mean, you could start letting your uh, letting your mind roll toward what if the Clippers just completely bought them out? They get lucky in the lottery, and Cooper Flag is on this team next. I mean, that that. But I don't think right now. You know, it's all it's. At the first of the season, everyone's all, oh, yeah, everybody's going to be good, and this is going to be great. As the season rolls along, and if the Clippers start to to go way downhill, all of a sudden, the riders, and I think people know this, but you're going to actually start seeing this out there of, oh, my goodness. Are you telling me that that team that already is this good with all those young guys, they get what? What? So that's part of it, and then also they'll get they would get Utah's top ten protected pick. So if Utah's pick is in the top ten, they don't get it. Next year that goes to a top eight protection. Okay, they would get Miami's lottery protected pick. So if, if Miami makes the playoffs, they'll get that pick. If not, or they won't get that pick if Miami makes the playoff. Wait, if Miami makes the playoffs, they get it. If they're in the lottery, they don't. You almost need Miami to not make the playoffs. And here's why. The next year, that pick is completely unprotected. So if Miami's going to be like, if you're going to get like the 14th pick, like the last of the lottery, you almost rather them just make them, them get it and then next year be completely unprotected. Right. And then Philly, this one, the Thunder are going to get this one. More than likely. Phillies is top six protected this year. If they happen to bottom out for some reason, it would be top four next year. So you're you're going to get the best pick of yours, Clippers unprotected, and then the Houston top ten protected, which you hope is the Clippers, right? Obviously. And then you probably get Phillies pick. And then we'll see. You probably don't get Utah. It's a lot of people think Utah is the worst team there is. It's top 10. You probably don't get that one. And then the Miami one's sort of up for debate what that is. So, man, that, that's going to be a huge story as far as, <clears throat> you know, what the, just outside of the Thunder actually being good. Okay, so I see you wrote all that down. Yes. Don't throw that away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've kinda, I'm trying to sear it into my mind right now as far as Because I'm going to be asking you all, all season long. Yeah, cause, so, I mean, basically – Root against root against the Clippers. Root against the Clippers and root uh, root against Miami. 
I think, just because. Now, I mean, you never know what happens in the lottery if you yeah. had, or, or just. But you're not going to get their pick if they're in the lottery. See, I almost want Miami to not be very good, or right on the cusp. Mm-hmm. Them get to draft 13th, which means they don't necessarily get some impact player. People leave in the offseason, and then next year going, hopefully Miami does what the Clippers did and just suck. And then we'll get their unprotected pick, too. But so, I you're- wonder at what point, like you said, the Clippers, they, they – you know, love Kawhi says that hangs it up. You know, there's already been <clears throat> talk of that, not from him, but people su- suggesting he should. He just can't stay healthy anymore. And then Harden, he says, I, I, "Get me out of here. I'm, I'm, this isn't going to work." I don't. But they know what ha- was happening with that pick, so it's not like they can go, "Okay, well, let's just shut her down. Let's tank." No, because and, they're going to look. Well, we can't do that because then we're helping out the Thunder. Well, here's another thing that they, that will be in the mindset of the Clippers for sure. Is what ha- what happened last night? Lost in overtime. To- they also opened up the Intuit Dome. Oh right, yeah, they want to. They, they want to feel, and I guess I mean KD was just in awe of that one end yeah. with the wall of fan. He was just completely in awe of it. So that, uh, but I don't know what you do if you're the Clippers. I'm actually looking at a video right now. I wonder if. That even that matters because of what you said. It's unbelievable. It's a new – People are going to go newest. anyway. They're going to go anyways, win or lose. And, and maybe fans – you know, L.A. is a, a lot like some of the other warm cities, uh-huh. warm weather cities, in that a lot of fans from everywhere else live there, retire. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And so that – yeah, you may be right. It, it, it It's not quite as important as here, um, but – it's going to be fun. There's no doubt about it. Like, I, I, like when the – hopefully it's not but like this, but when the new arena in Oklahoma City opens. By the way, they hired architects. I read an article about that, which is really cool. They're going to have like virtual reality 3D rendering where you could actually walk through mm-hmm. the arena before it's built. Same people that idea. built the, the one out in for Golden State. Oh, very cool. Sa- same people that same. designed it. Awesome. Yes. Well, if the Thunder, big if, there are bad – when that thing opens, people are still going to go, I think. I think it's still going to be the talk in the state. Like, let's go check out this new arena. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that. Them being bad. No, I know. I'm right, I mean, right I'm now. I'm just suggesting that sure. it, because if it's a, it's a new shiny penny, mm-hmm. that's what they got in L.A. That's the newest cool thing right now in L.A. Scoreboards of state-of-the-art, that wall, seating, whatever, all that stuff. So win or lose, people are still going to go. But I don't it, – it's crazy. And this might prevent tanking, you know, stuff like this when you don't want to tank for another team. Well, it's still – well, who thought that? I mean, that was obviously – Nobody thought that was going to was it. Well, yeah. one guy did. Oh, yeah, Mr. Presti. Yeah, or at least hoped. Yeah. And man, what what if that comes it, – it, it'd be the greatest so trade. so analytical. He looked at it and goes, okay, this percentage lead will give us a better chance to win if we get this SGA guy in the long term. And we have a – and who knows what could happen. The Clippers could tank or, or could be bad, and we get that pick – well, and I've heard I have heard him say this though. Everyone else was so enamored with the picks, and I've heard him say in his mind the entire time the biggest nugget of that trade was SGA. He he saw mm-hmm. or or had, saw at least the potential. Now, maybe he didn't think he he could be this good, but he certainly saw the potential of that. And you know, you go back to the stories of it. Um, now that was that was the. That, that was the thing that had to happen. Picks, no, you know, all obviously we're going to get picks, but the thing that had to happen for the Thunder to pull that trigger was the SG was SGA. Mm-hmm. I mean, this if if everything worked out perfectly, even if it's not Cooper Flag, what if they just get a top three pick uh, from that Clippers? You know, yeah, uh, it, it's it's one of the best trades of all time in any sport. And so that honestly, that's that's a lot of a lot more of my thundered upness. Yeah. There's a lot more about that for the regular season for me to watch the Clippers hopefully just implode than it is Oklahoma City winning 60 games or whatever. Yeah. Just because uh, for Oklahoma City, everything everything for me is, is all playoff oriented. Right. All I'm right. looking forward to uh, I mean, the certain new games guys, would be cool. The new guys, Caruso and Hartenstein, mm-hmm. I kind of hinted to that. How do they mesh? 
in Chet's sophomore year. Yeah. Great rookie year. Yeah, I want to see him get better. How much better those all those guys right. sort of get? Yeah, yeah Chet, Chet's a big one, honestly. Yep. All right, Jared. We have the World Series. Game one tomorrow, Starting right? Starting tomorrow. It is Yankees and it is Dodgers. Yankees, Dodgers have met in the World Series 11 times. The Yanks have won eight of them. Okay. Now, I think the television, we, we, we always sort of talk about television execs and, and who they want and who they don't want. And, you know, one would certainly be led to believe that New York versus L.A. would be right up their alley. Correct? Oh, yeah. I would certainly think that that would be true. Um, and so, it, 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 do, you, do you think the numbers were, will bear that out? I do. I'm looking at a table here of the lowest rated and highest rated World Series since 1973. And I don't think it'd shock anybody with the knowledge that the lowest four rated World Series are the four previous World Series. Post, uh, <clears throat> post last, COVID. Or- last year was actually the worst rated World Series of all time. And I think we probably knew that with Rangers Diamondbacks, right? I don't know that that tickled the fancy of the of the country. Makes yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, 2020 was the COVID World Series. Dodgers and what was that? Uh, Rays? Tampa Bay. Yeah. 2021 and 2022. And then you got to go back. The fifth worst rated was the sweep back in 2012. That San Fran and Detroit, and Detroit. Yep. yep. All right. So yeah, sweeps don't do anything. I mean that that the, the interest goes way down. And the truth of it is, uh, unfortunately, baseball has kind of headed that way. I mean, you can really uh, it goes back before the strike, but really. There, there's a big, giant line of demarcation in 2020 where the previous World Series were all, you know, certain games were all in the 20 millions to 25 million viewers. 2020, which was which was the Subway Series, so maybe that makes sense because it was all New York, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that one drops down, and then you, you start getting – it's matchup dependent, but the truth is it doesn't matter the matchup. The, the numbers – are down across baseball through the years. There's a lot of factors in there. There, there's, there is. There's, there's uh, no interest level. There's Not baseball there's, period. Uh, yeah, fatigue uh, as far as per- who's participating. I mean, when it was always Yankees, I was, I was like, come on, I, you know. But uh, I think when I say that, like, there's no disrespect, but Houston's played in how many? Since uh, was 19 the first one? No, 17 there. Da, 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 da. Yeah, 17. It was like Houston versus whoever. I wonder if there's a little, little fatigue in there. But, yeah, baseball's been struggling to to get viewers in. Well, what's and, crazy and you is want, – You want star power mm-hmm. uh, playing in these series. That's why I think this one right here is, is – Obviously, the, the New York-LA thing is huge because of the large market. But they have stars on these teams. Guys, we, we know as a – as a fan of the game, and, and even the novice fan will go, oh, yeah, that Aaron Judge guy, mm-hmm. I hear he can hit the ball. Otani. Otani. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it that alone will bring in viewers. You know what's crazy is you would think the Coast thing would have mattered in 2018, Boston and L.A. Right. Didn't. It's one of the worst. Now, it was, it was a five-game series. 
And so maybe it didn't, you know, it was lacking star power, or maybe that's just where baseball is. You know, say it's one of the worst. It was the highest rated over the since since it happened. So mm-hmm. here's my question. If we do believe that this is going to be higher rated than some of the others, this is going to be the th- this will be the highest rated World Series since when? I firmly believe this, and I said it before this the series was matched up back in the the NL and ALCS. I said it. If it's the Dodgers and Yankees, it'll be the most watched since 2016. Yeah, that's that's the one I've got. Now it's which the is Cubs, Cubs and Cleveland, and, and, Cleveland. and, and it, it, the the world is watching to see if the well, Cubs can can break the curse. And Cleveland too. I mean, Cleveland's got a yeah, long streak yeah, back true. too. Now, right. and the, Cubs have a huge fan base. And that and, one gets buoyed by Game Seven. Forty million people watch Game Seven. Yeah, and it only averaged twenty two. I mean, it was nineteen, seventeen, nineteen, sixteen. Then all of a sudden, you got twenty three, twenty three, forty. But that makes sense, though, right? I mean, that's that's the way that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that, hundred percent. It for baseball, it needs to be. For it, it needs to average. And I also first said off, it needs to go series, seven. I also said this series will save baseball. It needs to go seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yeah. order to get in order to, be to generate those big, 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 big numbers by the end of it, right? And yeah, that, it I, needs I, drama. It needs some <clears throat> walk off homers or game tying home runs, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Needs drama. It needs to go the distance. It needs to be fun. Do you know the last World Series or, or the one two thousand sixteen is the last one that averaged over twenty million viewers per game? Okay, you know the one before that. How far you got to go back before until that happened again? Man, I would I would probably I would want to say oh one. It was. It was since then. It's kind of a weird one, honestly. I do, uh, But I, it drew them because of what happened before. What happened? Two uh, thousand four. Red Sox. Reds, they took down the Yankees. Bloody sock. All of it. Yes, and that year they broke their curse. Yeah, and the, and heck, they swept St. Louis. Right. But they averaged. And they came. They were. They had dirt being thrown on them. Yes, they that that series averaged twenty five million. You have yeah, to you know yeah. where you have to go back to find one more watch than that. More watch than twenty five million per game. That's where I throw my head in the 0-1. More now, people watch. Socks. I remember like I was yeah. I didn't even care. It was. Shockingly enough, I just well, I I just, like that was my senior year. I, I remember mm-hmm. saying, "Okay, where what times the game?" I would sit yes. there. I was it was a, that O one series, but no, because it it was so. There's more than just a game. It was like it was, it was so comforting because of what happened on September 11th. I I'm actually like, like, shocked. This is baseball. I'm shocked that a four game sweep by the Red Sox and Cardinals has more viewers than that Diamondbacks Yankees per game. I'm shocked. Hmm. It's actually this. It's actually the 1995 coming out of the strike that's a that's interesting that is really interesting you think you'd lose a lot of fans now it was a six gamer braves back then kind of had everybody's attention you know how far you got to go back to find one that went 30 million a game is it is it in the 90s still yeah Yeah. it's in the 90s is it because they won a couple one of Toronto's Toronto Braves. Toronto Braves. The Braves are in nineteen ninety two. Yeah, thirty, thirty million, just Joe, over is that thirty. Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan. No, Joe Carter. Joe Carter. That's I'm the at, next year. Sorry, Carter. that was against the Phillies. That you're thinking of. I mean, yeah, the, Joe Carter's home, definitely on the team, but the home run happened against the Phillies. That was ninety three. That was ninety three. Yeah, yeah. So this, I, I think it, it is. It's a huge series, hopefully for baseball. And I, I agree with you. I think it it needs to be the highest rated since. Cubs Indians in 2016. Yeah. Question. I what mean, are it's gonna you... be tough. Game one's gonna be tough. They're going up against Oak City Weatherford. Yeah, it's true. That's gonna on be a tough. Friday. We have a lot of eyeballs on our game. What are some of the mo- most memorable moments moments you remember from the World Series? It's just kind of in your lifetime. Well, Rangers winning excluded. 
Um, O one George Bush throwing the pitch, right? Yeah, I've kind of broken this into off the field sure. things. Okay. Well, I just put moments, yeah. just never, but and then the, the, like the, on the field moments, and then we'll talk about what are our what were the best or our favorite World Series. Yeah, O one well. George Bush <clears throat> showing the world we're still the greatest country in the world. Mm-hmm. It's hard and, for that and, not and to be. You can't knock us down, and he yeah. throws a perfect strike. If that didn't give you chills and a tear in your eye. I don't know what. Well, you're you're heartless. You know, I've heard him, you're, you're unpatriotic. I've but. heard him say, you know, in in different things about that moment, how important it was for him to throw a strike. Yeah, in yeah. His, you know, he it really he felt like it was imp- not only to get out there and do it, As, yeah. but also to just whip it right down the yeah. middle. And of course, I guess he, he was in the in the warm up area underneath mm-hmm. or behind the dugout, warming up. Yeah, down down below. Yeah, throwing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, any what other things like? Well, 16, 16 Cubs because of what it meant clutching. I just remember where I was. I was right down the road in the hospital. My kid was James was a day old, and I remember sitting in the hospital room watching that happen. Same thing with the Red Sox, them clinching. And then you're going back to my like my. I had no idea how big it was until you're later in life but this was in my lifetime how about uh how about buckner in 86 mm-hmm. <laughs> and what and the the travesty that that was him uh just get your butt down buckner get your <laughs> get your glove in the dirt i mentioned joe carter walking mm-hmm. off for toronto uh kirk gibson walking it off that was 88 mm-hmm. just something i wrote down what about you I- I kind of broke it down into on field and off the field. Obviously, Bush's first pitch in 01 was huge. Uh, you know, there was an earthquake yes, in 1989 yeah, yeah, that yeah. delayed, and just so happened that it was the Bay Area series with Oakland and San yeah. Francisco when the earthquake happened there. Where that happened, and I was playing in my room, and I was wanting to watch the game with my dad. Earthquake happened. I kept coming out of my room. I was like playing with Ninja Turtles or something. I kept coming out. I was like, they started the game yet? I was like, no, there's an earthquake. So okay, let me know when they start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it never how about, started. <laughs> how about a month from now? <laughs> He's gonna be like, it's not starting today. <laughs> yeah. And then no World Series in 1994 because of the strike. Yeah. You know the off-field things that have happened just in our lifetime. I, I was actually reading about that today, and you forget, you forget kind of what was happening in that '94 season that that got shortened. I think you could make the case that that season ending early allowed the Nationals to come into existence because the Expos, if you remember, Montreal Expos were the best team in baseball. And what happened as soon as that season was kind of the 95 season started, all of a sudden a lot of those pieces started being sold off and the Expos never made the playoffs. Mm. after and basically became a running joke and now they're the nationals right other things that were happening in that season by the way just quick side note do you think that montreal will have to host or get to host tampa bay games because the, they said it'll be months they said probably won't be ready for them right. because their dome was the roof was torn off i've heard of them and buffalo yeah, Jeff Bagwell won the NF, NL MVP. Problem for Bagwell was his numbers were great, but he also got hit on the hand the day before the season stopped and was probably out the rest of the year. He might not even won the MVP because there were still 50-ish games left. Yeah. Uh, Tony Gwynn was hitting 394, trying to become the first since Ted Williams to hit 400. Matt Williams had 43 bombs, and that was back in those Chase and Maris days. Mm -hmm. Griffey had 40. On the field, you've already mentioned a couple of them. Uh, Kirk Gibson, the walk-off in 1988. You know, everybody remembers Mets, uh, Red Sox with Buckner and all that. Joe Carter. I know you don't want to hear about this, but Game 6, 2011, was just unbelievable theater. With David Fries and, and Josh Hamilton and, and everything that was Nelly Cruz, um, Kirby Puckett in 1991 in Game Six, the walk off against Charlie Lee Brandt that made that Twins Brave series go seven. 
Mr. November. Remember that? Speaking of 2001, actually on the on the field, when they flashed up the Mr. November sign for Jeter and he hit a home run. Yeah. I it, mean, it happened like minutes I mean, after midnight. Those games in that 2001 series in New York were just lunacy. The way that they all went down. Uh, and then Don Dinkinger, you know, does that bring up, does that ring any bells? I think that was game six in 1985 between Kansas City and St. Louis where he made that call at first base that allowed the Royals to uh, really kind of win the series. It's kind of the controversy. Mm. Uh, what are what are the best World Series in your mind since uh, since you've been alive? Uh, let's think about that one. The best series, well, reluctantly, 2011. That one went to seven games. It you know like, how many have gone to seven games since 1980? No, how many? I wrote this. I wrote this down. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, but David Freeze and and he turned into a Cardinals legend after that series. Because it felt like the Rangers were going to win it. It felt like the Cardinals were the favorite. Then the Rangers were going to win it. Then they dropped game six. I mean, literally had a chance to catch a ball and win it. Goes to game seven after extra innings and six. The rest is history. But that was memorable. I mean, despite my fandom, that was a really fun series. Yeah, I got that one as number five on my list. And, and partly because game seven was pretty meh. Well, I think at that point, one. It was hard for the Rangers to come back. Hard for Rangers to get up for that one, no doubt. Yeah, even though it was Game Seven of the World Series, the way Game Six ended was pretty difficult for them to come back and win that one. I don't know why this one always sticks out to me, but '97 Marlins beating the Indians, the Indians in seven. I uh, I was, you know, a kid. I was a seventh grader, and I just remember watching all of that. I just thought it was so cool, like a team that was so, I guess, a franchise that's so young like Florida could go up against this franchise that's been around forever in Cleveland and win the World Series. So I don't know why that one always stood out to me, but that, that one right there was cool. All those Braves series in the 90s were always fun for me. What did you write down? Yeah, I mean uh, that of one course, just oh one. I mean that I remember yeah. how that one ended, and I think um, everybody outside of Arizona was rooting for the Yankees because of what had happened in New York a few months earlier or a, or a month earlier, and but no one was disappointed. You know, it was like at the end of that series, I just remember thinking, "That's America. That's baseball." Give us seven games. Give us celebration. Mm -hmm. It it took our minds off of all the bad things that had happened. So it was so healing for America to have a series like that. And at the end of the day, I was like, I don't care who won. I really don't. I think most people would say 2001. As far as, I mean, depending on how old you are, people our age would probably say that. Uh, Yeah, the the 97 one just missed for me. You know how many you know how many walk off series clinching hits there's ever been in the World Series? Walk off series clinching hits. That's a great one. I would guess man, I want to say ten or less. Eleven. Eleven. Nine hits and only two home runs. We already talked about Joe Carter. Yeah. His was the, and then the other was nineteen sixty Bill Mazeroski for the Pirates to beat the Yankees as far as home runs. Uh, yeah, that 97 had Edgar Renteria. Yeah. Edgar Renteria had a walk-off hit. Was that game seven? Go, did that go in the extras? Uh, I think it did. I was just looking for that because it might be the only. I remember staying up late watching that. Thinking, I can't remember if it was the ninth or the tenth inning. Is that, that may be the only yeah. extra inning walk-off. Doesn't say. I, I know Joe Carter was not in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, no, 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 no. Gene Larkin. Gene Larkin did, and that's to me the best World Series that I've ever seen. It's 1991, Braves Minnesota Twins. It had everything. 
It had Kirby Puckett's Game 6 winner. Yeah. It had John Smoltz and Jack Morris in Game 7. That game was 0-0 through nine innings in Game 7 of the damn World Series. That's awesome. I found ratings. That was the most. Jack Morris threw all 10. Think about that in today's game. Uh, yeah. Jack Morris threw 10 shutout innings in Game 7 of the World Series. That is that is, this is like unfathomable right now. That Game 7, by the way. It had to have been I, one I just, of the highest rated I ones. just found the, the list of ratings. It, yeah, I had it up earlier. For one game. Yeah. Not a series. Not sure. an average of viewers. For one game, that was the most watched Game 7 uh, so far. I mean, that's the last one. That, am I making sense? It wasn't the most watched. There has not been a Game 7 watch more since then. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Even even 2001. Just because of the way baseball was in the 90s versus... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, Kirby Puckett, his, his home run was in Game 6, not Game 7. Gene Larkin had a single in Game 7 to win it for the Twins. To me, that's the best World Series there has been. Diamondbacks, New York is next in 01. I had, the, I had Chicago, Cleveland. For everything that that was, the Cubs and the Indians both trying to snap those ridiculously long streaks of of not winning a World Series. Um, Mets Boston in '86. I can vaguely remember, or maybe I just have watched. You know what I'm saying? And it pops in my memory. And then, yeah, St. Louis Texas in 2011. I think are kind of those that are, that are up there. So it all starts tomorrow night. Who you got? Dodgers. You got the Dodgers? Dodgers. I'll say in seven, though. God, I hope so. I hope it goes seven. I know who. Dodgers, right. Dodgers. And I, 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 now I'm being petty, but I love that Otani is on a team that can make the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And the World Series. Maybe he should have brought Trout with him so everybody could see how good that guy exactly. used to be. Yeah. Except he's hurt all the time. I'll take the Dodgers also. Okay, Jared, the first ever walk-off hit in World Series history. It happened in Game 8 of the 1912 World Series. And you're, I'm sure everybody's like, Game 8? Did you misspeak? No, I didn't. It was the Red Sox and the New York Giants. They played Game 8 because Game 2 ended in a tie because it got dark and they didn't have any lights. <laughs> so instead of just picking up Game 2... The next day, they played a whole nother game that went to extra innings. And Larry Gardner hit a sack fly to win. That's a whole nother game of ticket sales. Yep, you're exactly right. Uh, 1927, Oral Combs of the Yankees scored on a wild pitch against the Padres to complete a four-game sweep. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, okay, high school football. Obviously, uh, the, the district races are heating up. I didn't write down a bunch about Class A, District 1, and here's why. They all play each other. Sayre, Cashin, Hinton, all tied at 3-1. and one. Now, the one disadvantage that the Eagles have is they're seven points behind in the district standing. So what they would need, if everybody beats everybody, and they all play each other, Hinton, Cashin, and Sayre all play each other here in the last three weeks, and the game they don't play each other, you know who they play? Fairview, which Fairview is tied at three and one as well. So they all four teams vying for three spots play round robin the rest of the way. So that'll figure out itself, right? Mm -hmm. And and we'll know more once those games start to be played. Um, let's see. In class four A district one. Elgin is on top. Weatherford Clinton at three and one. Big Elks and Bridge Creek two and two. It's pretty simple for the El simple for the Elks. They still sort of they need here. Here's in order for this for them really to control their own destiny. They would need Cash to beat Clinton by fifteen. They would need that to happen in order to truly control their own destiny with a a seven point win against Weatherford. And then beat Bridge Creek and Woodward, get the full complement of the 15. That would make them second. But Elgin has to beat Clinton with the 15, you know, just because that's what happened to Elk City and Weatherford against Elgin. 
You said cash. I'm um, Clinton. Okay. Clinton and Elgin. I'm sorry. Clinton okay. and Elgin. I'm talking about Clinton and Elgin. That's sorry. That's a tough ask for cash. No, 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 no. Really well. Elgin has to beat Clinton by 15. Right. Or you get the full 15 against them like they did Elk City and Weatherford. Right. For the, for the Elks to really have their destiny in their hand. That Which, would have to yeah, I mean, to help out. That's so that's a, It seems fairly possible. Very possible. With the way that, that, that Elgin is. So, uh, you know, the, the Elks, ha- it's interesting because, yes, on one, on one hand – they have that as a carrot out front tomorrow night. If you want to look at the other hand, next week could be a play-in game. If things don't go well Friday, right? You know that that's complete. You know, from hosting the first round to not in the playoffs at all, both ends of that spectrum are available uh, to the Big Elks in these next couple of weeks. So that's uh, it's really a really important game, obviously, uh, with Weatherford. Some other games around the state that will that will impact who certain teams play in the playoffs. Blanchard at Tuttle is the is the number one game in the state, according to the Oklahoman. That's for the District 2 title. It's number four versus number two. Uh, that is at Tuttle. And the truth of it is, one of the I-40 schools liable to head to Tuttle or Blanchard, whoever wins the district. Well, two of them are. Two of them are li- two of them are headed that way. If all four, uh, if the the playoff teams are Elgin, Weatherford, Clinton, Elk City, and whatever order, mm-hmm. somebody will go to Tuttle, somebody will go to Blanchard uh, with the three I forty schools, more than likely. And then also, Bethany is at Ardmore. Now there's a three way tie right now for third through fifth, depending on who wins the Bethany Ardmore game. If it's Bethany. Then the then whoever hosts out here, other than Elgin, we assume, will get Bethany. If Bethany beats Ardmore, if Ardmore beats Bethany, then next week could matter too with uh, Ardmore and Hera for that third place in Divi- in uh, District Two. So those are those are some games to watch at least for the first round, second round. Um. Pa, uh, Wagner and Grove play for the district title in uh, District 3. Miami's still there. I don't know. I didn't even look to see who Miami still has. They got Cushing. Yeah, so they, they've already got they've already beat Grove and lost to Wagner. So that could create if, if Grove beats Wagner, that creates a kind of a three-way mess atop that district. But that's where somebody could be going in round two think two years ago three years ago whatever that was now three years ago when the Elks went to went to uh, Grove in round two Ugh. as the third place team and then also <laughs> district four is a mess which that could be uh, there's no telling they all play the top four play each other this week broken bow at Ada Poto at Salisaw so that could be a possibility. You know, th- those are second round possible matchups down the line as well, depending on what happens in District Four. So there's a lot going on, uh, and also Bridge Creek and Wo- Bridge Creek Woodward. You know, if Woodward were to pull an upset, then all of a sudden that game matters more for the Big Elks down the road, and then you know Bridge Creek maybe not as much. You know, there's just a lot going there uh, as far as those those playoff spots, and that's the way it is every single time. So a lot to look forward to. Also, have you seen uh, – I talked about a district that's just pretty crazy. I, I don't know that I've ever seen this this late. Do you know which one it is? No. So in 6A Division Two, District Two. okay? Okay. With three weeks oh, to wow. go, you've got three – you've got four 4-0s four and, and four 0 and 4s. <laughs> So they all haven't played each other. Yeah, that's it. They, that's the the crazy part is a you got four four and O's and four O and fours, and the fact that the way the schedule broke, the four and O's have only played the O and fours. You know what I mean? That just so happens this week. Yeah, everybody plays this yeah, week. I the, mean, the next the three. top two play each other, and three and four play each other. Well, and they're all four and O. Yeah, that's what they're, they're yeah. all undefeated. So in the next three weeks, every team that's four and O. It's going to play the other three that are four and zero going into week eight. Wow, how wild is that? that I, I've that never is, seen that. That's fun. 
and then the old fours. So what you're so what you're probably having there in District Two of Six A Division Two is you're going to have a whole bunch of good football and a whole bunch of crappy football <laughs> because the O and fours obviously then play each other as well over these last three mm-hmm. weeks. I, I thought that was really interesting to see the way that that broke out. But uh, I mean, it's just stuff it, it, you know not only to look forward to the games that that are going to be played. So I guess this week, obviously, Elk City and Weatherford. Uh, gosh, Elgin at Douglas. Oh, ouch. Um, then Clinton run the clock. Clinton hosts Cash. So the Big Elks and Clinton senior night this week because they're both on the road. The last two, Clinton goes to Elgin and Douglas after this. The Elks go to Bridge Creek and Woodward after this. So. That's an interesting, that kind of a schedule anomaly as well. Uh, but first things first, as far as uh, the Big Elks go, they have to beat, they have to win the game against Weatherford. If they win it by a touchdown, then things will get really interesting down the stretch as far as the playoff positioning, and we'll be able to kind of explain that just a little bit more. So, anything else? Thunder up tonight? Yeah, get the coffee ready. Be late one, nine o'clock. Hear it right here. Try it. That's something I got to start refocusing my mind on. <laughs> is getting this log prepared for Thunder for Games. Thunder otherwise, games. It's an, otherwise, it's an absolute mess. <laughs> Thank goodness it's a late one. Yeah. All right, everybody, have a wonderful Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow. Scotty G, hopefully, in the house for a Garrison Financial Friday. Skinny on Sports right here on the Sports Channel. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way.